What's up everyone, this is John. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how to load and play Sony PlayStation 2 games as well as Nintendo GameCube games on the new Xbox Series X or Series S system. What's really cool is you can turn the system into a, an official dev system license, which is awesome. It's an app uh, you have to download on the store. It is $19.99 for the license, unless you're a, a game developer and, and then it's $100 for that. Uh, I will say almost there, if the system's not fully up to date, make sure it is, so go to settings, go to uh, system and then go to updates. If it is fully up to date and it still give you that message, uh, it, it's kind of a bug in it, I've noticed. So the, the quick bypass is go to, go back, go to console info, hit LB, RB, LT, RT, and it'll open up a dev mode. Make sure you click it, go to continue. It's gonna reset uh, the system and that's how you bypass that. So it took, took me a while to figure that out. I do wanna give a big shout out to my friend Kirk aka Qbert addict one for stepping through this helped me a lot through this process as well he's got a great youtube channel when you log into your dev system go to hit plus or start go to manage dev storage settings you're going to expand your your storage settings i like i prefer 65 gigs it's automatically preset to two gigs or less meaning if you have a game that's more than two gigs it will not load so you definitely want to adjust that notice bottom right corner where it says remote access is https address it is not an HTTPS address, it's actually an HTTP address. But anyway, put those those numbers into your, your PC. Uh, make sure that your settings, you are connected online as well. And notice you sometimes have to re, redo that. Once you type in the address, go on to, you'll click the add, green button. Go, you're gonna add, we're adding RetroArch. So what we're doing here is we're side loading it onto our, our system. I did have issues using uh, Chrome. Uh, Microsoft Edge is what I'm using here. I'm not quite sure if it's a coincidence that Microsoft owns both. I'm sure it's not a coincidence. It's going to take a couple minutes. So uh, basically, uh, it's if you have other programs you want to load, this is how you would do it using this 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 website. Now, this is not a secure website for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. So you may get a warning saying, uh, don't access this website. Uh, don't worry about it. To be honest with you, just, just bypass that. But don't be surprised if you see a warning on your um, your Edge you know, um, site. Okay, it shows it's done even though it's uh, so it's halfway, but that uh, should be clear here in a second. Uh, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to, there you go. Uh, we're gonna add, same thing, go to add file. And I usually put these on uh, the desktop. We're gonna scroll down, we're gonna find it. It's called my, you'll see it here in a second. My file explorer, that's what we're gonna add. It's only gonna take a couple seconds, it's not as large a file. We're gonna close this once that loads. Click done. We're gonna open a file up. I have it saved on my desktop here. PCSX2, this is the core. Double click on it and it's gonna open up all these files. Go to where it says BIOS. You're gonna have to go online to Google and find out where you can get those the BIOS, BIOS files. Basic copy over the files in here, this part of the folder here. Uh, and you, what you're gonna do is take a USB drive, copy over PCSX2 core, as well as your games. You're gonna create a file for your games, copy it over that USB drive and plug it right back into your system. You'll notice now that you have a RetroArch as well as My File Explorer show up. Hit the select button or whatever this two square is on your controller on RetroArch. Hit View Details and change it to a game from an app. It's gonna allow it to uh, work better for you. Then what you're gonna do is you wanna sign into RetroArch. So you go down and go down to RetroArch, sign in. And once you sign in, click again. It's gonna take a few seconds to load into RetroArch. You know, so the, the words are kind of all pixelated a little bit. doesn't look really great. Go to online updater, go to update assets. This is going to take about five minutes or so. So be patient. I'm speeding this up uh, through editing, but it's going to take a while to update. So be patient here. Okay. Now you look now as quickly and font is gone. Now go to update core and files. It takes about a minute or so. Update control profiles pretty quick, then update databases. Hit B, go back. Go to settings, go to dry, uh, video. We're going to output. And go, we're gonna change the video to D3D12. It was on D3D11 prior. We're also going to stay in the settings menu. Go down to input and scroll down 
You can see where it says hotkeys. Click on hotkeys. From there, menu toggle gamepad combo. There's gonna be about a dozen options or so. Maybe like, yeah, about a dozen. So I, I prefer start and select, but you can kind of choose what you prefer. Go down to scaling. This is the input. Uh, we're gonna do inter integer scale on. We're gonna turn that on. I forgot to do that before. We're gonna go down to user interface. We're gonna turn the pause content both off. Two options there. Main menu. Go to configuration file. And we're gonna save current configuration. And take a few seconds. And once it's done saving, we're gonna quit RetroArch. Go to my file explorer, open that up. You can see two files here, removable storage as well as isolated storage. So go to click on double click on removable storage. And see this is where PCSX2, this is what he copied over. Go to removal disk, you're gonna actually copy this over, hit start. Again, we're gonna copy folder. This is also the folder PT the game drives will put into your USB drive. Isolate. We're gonna to go to packages. And we're gonna to go to top right with the three dots. Change the format a little bit. And it's the one E4C, the one starts there. Scroll down to local state. And you're gonna scroll down where it says systems. And we're basically copying over that, that system core, the PS2 core, and we're gonna go and paste it in there. <clears throat> it takes a few seconds. Go back. Go to remote storage devices. This is your USB, go down to PS2 games. And this is the games, I have a few, I'm gonna copy this. Hit start and copy. Go back, go isolate the storage again. Go up to where it says packages. Go in the same folder. Click local, local state and we're going to do a new folder and just name it, I name it games or whatever you want to name it. And click click open that, that folder and this is where we're going to paste those games into here. This is going to take a moment, I'm going to speed this up, but this is going to take uh, quite some time depending on how many games you have. Right now I have three games, but it's going to take, if you have more games, obviously it's going to take a bit longer. X out of this. Go back home, open up RetroArch. One thing I almost forgot to point out earlier is when we update the assets, it looks nice, we got the images now, everything looks smooth and clean, cleaner than it did before anyway. Go down to import content, once you log in, we're gonna do a manual scan. We're gonna search for these games, go to content directory, go down to the Q folder, all the way to the bottom, this is what we just added. And we're gonna to go to games. There it is. Okay, perfect. Rename system. It's gonna go down to the PlayStation 2. It's all alphabetical. We're gonna look for uh, default core. It's gonna be the PCSX2. So standard RetroArch right now doesn't have that PS2 core and that's what we had to do that for. We're gonna start scan. And you'll see now in the bottom left corner now I have that PlayStation 2 controller there. That's where the games are. We're gonna do the same thing for the GameCube. So we're gonna import content, scan direct, manual scan. It's so the e, e folder. If you have your USB drive in, it's an E. Go to GameCube games. We're gonna scan this. Scan this directory. System, it's gonna be the Nintendo GameCube. And for any system you have, you load the, the games, you put it on the USB, this is how you would do it. You see there's a lot of different cores. And it's gonna be Nintendo GameCube, or Dolphin. There it is. And scan. Now you see the GameCube there. So let's start with the GameCube. I'll show you the game. I've got three games now. I'll show you Mario Kart. It, it's gonna go, you're gonna run. 
It's going to be dark for about a minute or so. This is just the game loading up, so don't be surprised if it takes a minute or longer for it to load the game. But the game will eventually load up, and here we are with Mario Double Dash. I notice it, with some of the cutscenes, you'll notice some, some skips with the music and stuff like that, but the game is completely playable. And GameCube has been kind of a, a challenging core to, to emulate, a system to emulate. But it's one of my favorite Mario Kart games. It's great. I'm gonna start. One thing I also noticed, the button mapping, it's a little tricky because B is to go and X is to use your, your weapon. So either you have to like wrap my pointer finger over to use X while I'm pushing B with my thumb or to let go of my gas and push X. So you can remap the, the controls, but initially the controls are, are mapped a little crazy, but it does, using the Xbox controller actually handles pretty well using the analog sticks, etc. So pretty smooth, not many delays. Looks pretty good overall. Came to bring it back. Some good memories, for sure. We're gonna exit, and uh, one thing I did notice is when you exit the game, you have to kind of close out the whole retro arch entirely, and then kind of reopen it up, which is kind of a pain. You can't just exit the game and go to a different game. And another, so when I reopen a retro arch again. And one thing I do want to point out is you need to clear the playlist to load another game too. So you want to go to um, directory playlist, manage playlist, go to history, and go down to clean playlist. If you don't do this, I've noticed that if I want to load another game on another system, another core, like a PlayStation 2, the game will, will crash. It won't, it won't load up. So same thing as before. Pick my game. So this is God of War, the first one, PlayStation 2. I've already set my core defaults and all that. So it's going to take... A couple minutes, a couple seconds, you can see how long this is actually real time. So it didn't take very long. You'll notice that the image itself is small. It's not quite to scale. It's kind of off to the right corner. Um, so I can hit my hotkeys button. So start and select to get to uh, the menu. Sounds good, looks good though so far. So I'm going to hit, you notice here it kind of looks off. So it's kind of confusing. You have to go to settings and go to video. And you go to window mode. It's very confusing. And then change the winning mo uh, window mode. Right now it's it's 3.0x. Now you want to change it to two or one. And you're gonna look right here. It's gonna take a few seconds to reboot. And look right here. It's it's at two two x right now. And already it looks a lot better so we're going to exit out of this and that's how you fix it you want to adjust it so it looks better now notice here you see some kind of white flashes that's probably the emulation so the ps2 emulation isn't perfect although in gameplay wise uh, it handles pretty well so this is still kind of a new new core so they're still working things out and one thing i've learned about the emulation is these it just evolves so quickly that it's just a matter of time before they they really get it down right so here, here comes into the gameplay. You can kind of see if there's any lagging or not. I didn't really notice any significant lagging. One thing I did notice while I was playing was that the, the controller vibration was on cons constantly. It wouldn't turn off. So you know, after playing for a while, your, your hands get a little sore from the vibration. Um, that's one thing I did notice. I'm not quite sure the settings on how to turn that off, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah, it handles pretty well. This game throws back a lot of memories. <laughs> but that's how you... you, you load these games onto your Xbox Series X or S. We'll work on both units. Uh, work with other emulations as well. I just wanted to highlight these two because these are kind of more advanced emulators and the Xbox Series X really handles it fairly well to be honest and even going back to the original Xbox system emulation on that is, is pretty cool too. So I really appreciate you guys watching guys. Thanks for leaving a comment um, for subscribing. That means a lot and we'll see you guys soon. Take care. Oh and one thing I wanted to mention too. If you leave dev mode so go, we're going to exit here. I want to point this out because I did notice this. Go to leave demo. See how it says disable side loaded games. There's where you checked. Make sure that's unchecked because you can also go to uh, launch home. And I'll do this real quick. Launch home. And I'm still in dev mode. So we, this looks more like the traditional home screen. I'm going to go back to RetroArch. But if you leave and that checkbox is checked, you're going to delete everything you've just loaded. I did that by mistake. So make sure that's unchecked. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care and game on.